Okay, this is going to be a very brief beginner's tutorial on using the ham UE -er, or hammer plugin for Unreal Engine 4 that allows you to import map files such as in this particular case Quake Maps from Trench Broom. So it could be any tool that creates the map file. The, the tool you're using it doesn't really matter because Hammer just looks for the .map file itself and the wad file where all your textures come from. Now you can set that up to be different as well. You can have it just look for raw texture files, but we won't be worried about that. Now this is just the source Quake One Start Room. Um, just for speed sake of the tutorial, I went ahead and deleted the back area so we don't have to import all that. And I deleted the sky just because it won't automatically have the features. And we'll just use um, in Unreal. We'll just use the um, default file new level that has some, a few lights and a player start and just so it looks a little better. Um, one quick thing, Hammer turns every brush into a static mesh. So every one of these individual brushes will be an individual static mesh. There's some, it's not very efficient as far as like what your total files look like. Um, We'll cover that when we actually see it in Unreal, but one there is a quick way to remedy that. Anything that you say group together some way, so like um, I gotta select all these pieces and just go to like funk group or funk detail, whatever. It doesn't really matter because the, what things do when they're compiled for Quake doesn't matter in this transference. It's just it just treats this map file. And trench booms level like as a model that's being imported but I already set up like say this light thing here is all these separate pieces but I already made a fun group this one so you can see the difference so anyway we're pretty much done with this um, in Unreal I already have hammer installed um, it's just a what it's worth you can grab the plugin here. Uh, just Google it; you'll find it. Um, I'll try to. I'll be sure to link it in the description. And the one thing you'll need to do, if you haven't set them up already, is set up your textures so it knows. Say, for example, in trench room, it knows to look for the star wad. So basically, in the uh, texture tab, and you know, we won't be worried about the props. Um, in the texture tabs, you need a you need a master material. So I've already set one up. A master material to tell the textures where to go and the instances of. Um, let me see here. I'll take a quick look. This is the master I made. It's just super super simple. Just to I brought in the quake water just as a temporary texture. Plug it into the base color, and this needs to be set to a parameter because this is a master, and it'll make an instance all the other textures for you. Really convenient. And I went ahead and plugged in a 0 and a 1 for the metallic and roughness because otherwise it, the material will be kind of shiny. And I just wanted it to look flat basically like basically like how it would look in Quake. Um, I didn't really adjust it so that set up. Um, you need to choose a source vector where your wad is. Uh, you won't see it, but I know mine's there. Um, and you just you know, import it or and or discover them. Um, lucky me, I've already done this because this process can take a few minutes depending on the size of your wad. So we'll just skip that to save a little video time. Um, so anyway, configure. This is also pretty important. There's a lot of settings in here that, depending on your project, you'll want to set up. Um, I found uh, that the scale conversion around 25 is pretty accurate to the uh, FPS default or FPS template default units, as in like the height of the characters and such. Um, and it's, you know, the, the conversion between Quake and Unreal is a, a bit different, but and again, everything's different and on your project. Um, you'll want to use zero out Q1 rotations. This actually, uh, check this if you're using valve mode. Here. 
if your map is a valve mode for using the uh, texture alignment. If not, you don't have to worry about it. Since I'm using the original source start map, I don't have to worry about it. Um, decouple brushes to the origin is pretty good because otherwise all the static matches, their origin point will be the 0, 0, 0 versus this, puts them in the center of the match. It kind of makes it easier to work with. But, and uh, we can cover more of that later. Um, but for the most part, we're all good to go. Um, so I'll choose the file, which is that start map. Um, I don't want entities. You can bring in entities. It'll, it, it really only affects, um, unless you have something already set up, it'll only affect lights. So it'll, you can actually bring in light entities. And they'll be created as point lights, which is, that can be convenient, but I don't really care for it. Uh, so anyway, once you have that, pot, that chosen, you have an import directory, wherever you want that to be, um, I'll just use this Q start and just click open file and see it discovers there's all of them the textures which is great um, since that was already set up for texture -er, so you might recognize all these lovely names as quake textures one thing uh, that's really important is this no draw or ND if you select a material to be the no draw material um, we won't see it in this because I haven't set up anything for it. Like say how when you compile a map, everything outside the map will not be drawn. But this isn't compiling. This is just treating each brush as a static mesh. So what you might want to do is say, um, like select this, select one of these faces and just make them a the clip brush and then come back in here. and Now just this front face like that and then you would go back in hammer and make the uh, and choose the clip brush or the clip texture to be no draw then when you do that none of those faces will be created when it converts that brush to a static mesh that's a uh, for sanity and efficiency say you'll want to start doing that but we're not going to worry about that quick tutorial so I'm just going to click go and as you can see it's importing the map Doop, yep, there it is so there's a few funny settings I need to adjust. Um, let me just hit unlit real quick. Uh, and let me go back to my master material because I should have done this in the first place. Let me see. Actually, let me check. Four. Do, do, do. Go to my master. Okay, so it's looking it's looking at an old one that I didn't want. That's fair. Set the default all the way up to one so that flattens everything out. That's a little closer to what I want, but uh, let's go ahead and grab this light. Let's just grab all this stuff. And I'm just going to bring it right in here. Just so it's in the area. I'm going to rotate this light. There we go. So we can see a little bit more. Again, it's really dark in here because there are no lights. So can just um, right click place actor point light and I'm just gonna make it really big whoops and really intense just drag a couple of these around just to fill the area with some light And I do believe I need to make one other small adjustment here. Is this it? Yeah, there it is. It was specular. Setting that to zero. That removes that funky shininess. 
Um, let's copy one more layer here. All right, hunt layer. Let me grab all my point lights real quick. Let me make them brighter. Just there we go. Just so it's really easy to see. So yeah, I should just be able to hit play. And I imported this over my temp template, so. So there you have it. So pretty much nicely working as intended. Um, just to show you that one thing, because I grouped these, this is a single static mesh versus these ungrouped ones, which are many, many pieces. Again, the same with this piece. It came in as a single piece. Because that's one of the things you'll have to learn to translate is everything, every brush becomes a unique static mesh. And that can be a real inefficient nightmare. So you want to get um, well acquainted with properly grouping meshes um, using a no draw material so you don't have all these backsides and unseen faces. But overall, that's it. It creates collision for you. It uses simple collision, and these are all pretty simple boxes, so it's not a big performance issue. Um, there's a few other things you'll have to get used to. Um, Hammer doesn't like certain shapes. It likes to crash. Um, any non-square brush or non-triangulated, it might give you issues with light maps. Um, Again, it likes to crash, it likes to make errors, and sometimes you just need to track down a single brush, find out what's causing the problem, and delete or recreate that brush in trench room before it'll eat it. But overall, I mean, that's your basics. This will, this will work.